Uh, yeah, I mean, some good news. Two items of good news. Two items of good news I want to report. Uh, one is, um, I don't know how many of you know who Mark Andreessen is. Mark Andreessen is. Mark is one of the premier venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. He's a big name in the Valley. He's a big name in our culture, I think, particularly about uh, uh, among uh, computer nerds, but in the venture community, startup community, tech community. This is, this is a big name. Um, and Mark and Jason decided to uh, write about Ayn Rand today, interestingly. Um, so his first tweet two hours ago, I think it was about two hours ago, whenever, earlier today, uh, maybe three hours ago, his first tweet was, overheard in Silicon Valley, colon, Ayn Rand's heroes are fake, but her villains are real, right? Interesting, and, and that's the tweet. Interesting the way he phrases that, because it's not necessarily him saying it, but it's, I think, what a lot of people think. But overheard in Silicon Valley, Ayn Rand's heroes are fake, but her villains are real. Now, you know, I was going to talk about that and, and what that reveals about the people who say that, that they can't live up to be the heroes. Um, it's not political. It's not anything. It's just a statement of, of, about Ayn Rand's heroes, about, about who they are. So I think here you really get a, uh, a sense of uh, how defeated uh, so many of these entrepreneurs and people are. It's kind of sad. They are the ones who should be Ayn Rand's heroes. But it, it, Mark Andres is not saying it, funnily enough, in his own words. It's like overheard in Silicon Valley. But then, about an hour ago, an hour ago, he posted a whole thread. And the thread, from beginning to end, is a quote from the Fountainhead. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, Ellsworth Tui. It's one of the bad guys, one of the villains. Um, and, and it's one of the most powerful, impactful, you know, I think, passages that Ayn Rand ever wrote. Um, I'll just quote some of it. The so uh, and I'm quoting Mark Andreessen's tweet. The soul is that which can't be ruled. It must be broken. Drive a wedge in. Get your fingers on it, and the man is yours. You won't need a whip. He'll bring it to you and ask to be whipped. Set him in reverse and his own mechanism will do your work for you. Want to know how it's done? There are many ways. Here's one. Make man feel small. Make him feel guilty. Kill his aspiration and integrity. That's difficult. The worst among you gropes for an ideal in his own twisted way. Direct man towards a goal destructive of all integrity. Tell man that, man that he must live for others, that altruism is the ideal. Not a single one of them has ever achieved it or will ever. His every living instinct screams against it. But don't you see what that will accomplish? What you accomplish? Man realizes that he's incapable of what he's accepted at his noblest, as his noblest virtue. And it gives him a sense of guilt, of sin, of his own basic unworthiness. Since the supreme ideal is beyond his grasp, he gives up on all ideals, all aspirations, all sense of personal value. Why preserve that which one knows to be corrupt already? His soul gives, his soul gives up self-respect. You've got him. He'll obey. He'll be glad to obey because he can't trust himself. He feels uncertain. He feels unclean. That's one way. And it goes on. And at the end, at the end of it, uh, he writes, this is, yes, this is Tui talking to Keating. At the end of it, uh, Mark Andreessen writes, a fictional character who could never exist in real life, I assume. Uh, now, uh, that's powerful. It's a powerful statement. It's a powerful scene. 
it's uh, reflective of so much of the evil in the world around us. It's a direct, direct criticism of altruism, of the moral code that dominates the world out there, embraced by one of the great venture capitalists in Silicon Valley right now, who, by the way, funnily enough, follows me on Twitter. Um, I, I encourage you, if you're on Twitter, if you engage in Twitter, um, then go and make a comment, like it, retweet it, comment on it. You know, give give this some give this some energy. Let this don't let this die. Let this be be a, 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 a you know commentary that keeps going. Uh, so that I thought that was terrific. It's just terrific. And in, in, in it, it, to see somebody, I don't know if he's just discovered it. I don't know if, um, I, I think he knows Ayn Rand and has known her for a long time, but why he would quote this today and what, what's the context, I don't know, but it is, um, it's, it's great to see it. So that's the good news. I think that's good news. Hopefully you guys think it's good news. Um, the second I'll, I'll just mention quickly, I am, as I told you, reading uh, David Deutsch's uh, uh, from beginning, uh, be The Beginning of Infinity, um, and I'm on chapter three. Um, I have a lot of reservations about chapter one. Um, he's so freaking close, and, and, he, and he, his epistemology is just, just keeps missing, just keeps missing. I, I wish he would read I was somebody to give him, although it probably it probably too late. But I wish somebody would give him to read um, Introduction to Objectivist Epistemology. I'm I'm, I'm so curious, or, or li and listen to Leonard Peikoff's talks on induction. But it would be fascinating uh, to see his response to that. But um, uh, Chapter Two is really good. Chapter Three is brilliant. Chapter Three is truly brilliant, and it makes up for any misgivings I have, although the misgivings still undercut it, undermine it. So it's so much fun reading an author who I think, for, you know, based on my limited knowledge, seems to be taking an original view, um, presenting an original perspective, critiquing what needs to be critiqued, uh, presenting a positive, inspiring uh, view of mankind, of uh, human ability to reason, even though he doesn't call it human ability to reason, of, what's, of, of what progress makes possible, of the infinity that is progress. He comes so close to Rand's view with regard to concepts. In a, in a sense, concepts are this beginning of infinity. Um, this, th there's a lot that can be integrated there, and it's interesting. He really needs her epistemology, but he, you can see what I think is an original mind, a, a truly brilliant mind, uh, grasping with certain philosophical, certain um, uh, uh, issues, and then, but just a pro-human being, a pro-life, pro-progress, pro-success, pro-progress, uh, uh, just, just fun, fun to read. So, so far, and I'll keep giving you updates as I read through the book, I'm listening to it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, chapter three is definitely worth reading and um, and listening to. So uh, that's two good good pieces of good news. So don't 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 uh, skip it. Right. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.